Happy to welcome you to the Mario Cristobal Show. Joe Zagacki alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. And this week, the Miami Hurricanes are on the road against the Orange of Syracuse, a 3.30 kickoff from the Dome in Syracuse. And boy, oh boy, Don, we got ourselves a big ball game on Saturday. That we do, Joe. You, you win this one and you advance. So yep. it's really uh, step one of the playoffs. This has been fun. Last week, Miami took on Wake Forest, a uh, very stingy Wake Forest team. And this time of the year, nothing comes easy because everybody's fighting for something, whether you're fighting for the playoffs, whether a player's fighting for playing time, a coach might be fighting for his job on the other sideline. It all comes together. Uh, it was a hard-fought game on Saturday. Miami emerged with a, with a nice win. It really did, Joe. And you look at that football game, and the Miami defense, they were the ones that were praised the most and should be. Uh, the offense did put up 500 yards, did score some touchdowns, had a, a flurry of points at the, in the last half of the fourth quarter. But defensively, Miami came out and did exactly what they wanted to do and dominated the football game. A second-half shutout by the defense also held Wake to one for nine on third downs in the second half. Yeah, it was important to note that, but the running game of the Miami offense ballyhooed that because it helped time of possession, but defensively, the communication was the best it's been all season long. All right, coming up this Saturday, it is Miami and Syracuse. Pretty simple. Hurricanes win. They go to the ACC championship game. We'll talk about that with Hurricanes head coach Mario Cristobal as we continue right after this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. Hurricanes this week go to Syracuse to take on the Orange at 3.30 p.m. in uh, Syracuse, New York, but coming off a big win at home against Wake Forest. Coach, congratulations on that. Big win, go undefeated for the regular season at home. Well, certainly appreciate you know our fans. I know we mentioned it after the game, but uh, i got to say it again. The, the support this season has been incredible. Um, and Hard Rock has become a very difficult place to play. And um, I think the word's out there now, and we, we expect it to get stronger and stronger, but really grateful to our friends and families that have made it out to every game. All right, Coach, 10-win season, 10-1-0 games. You're, you're, you're at that point. has not happened too often around here, a couple times since the early 2000s. But also the importance of being undefeated at home. That's something that you live your entire career here. But it was also a big part of the history here at Miami. It's nice to see that you go through the whole season undefeated at home. It's always been one of the biggest goals as we, you know, just keep having and making more progress towards becoming the program we want to become. Uh, playing at home, uh, making sure that you achieve, you know, certain benchmarks uh, are so critical because it's, right, it's tangible progress. You can see it. You could feel it. So really proud of uh, the players and the staff for what they poured into this thing. And, the best part about it, like right after the game, the focus immediately shifted to the 1-0 opportunity that we have this Saturday. So a lot of football uh, left to play for the Miami Hurricanes and, and all eyes, all focus, everything on playing against Syracuse. Yeah, big game uh, here on Saturday. Uh, in order to get to this game, that Wake Forest uh, victory, uh, jumping out, I think, was the defense. Mm -hmm. At one point uh, to start the game, Wake was – three for four, hit three of their first four uh, third downs. But then the rest of the way, your defense put a cold front on them. They went one for nine on third downs the rest of the way. Yeah, it was uh, it was about as impressive of a defensive showing as we've had all year over the last couple of years, really, where for nine successive possessions, there were no points. Mm -hmm. And uh, they believe there were four to five, three and outs, a couple four and outs. And the communication... Uh, the leveraging of the football, the tackling, uh, the alignments, the assignments certainly took a, a really significant step towards what we want to be. And your offense, Coach, the opening drive there, too, was 13 plays, 84 yards, 6 minutes and 22 seconds. And it just seemed to stabilize everything on that side of the football. Mm -hmm. We start off fast, yeah. you know, and uh, we got ourselves a touchdown and then a field goal. Then uh, we missed we missed on tackling, you know, their kickoff returner and things got a little bit sticky there. Uh, and then we sputtered a little bit on offense. Um, but then we got ourselves going again. We, we hurt ourselves with illegal procedure penalties. We hurt ourselves with holding penalties. And when we put it all together, we really started getting some chunk gains on, uh, in the ground game and some really good passes as well. So all in all, just found a way to bring it together and get the W. Coach, how about the... Uh the physicality 
that your team played with on both sides of the ball. The defensive line against that mesh offense kind of smashed him right there, pushing him back. And then uh, your inside run game was outstanding. Yeah, the, uh, the line of scrimmage, those guys uh, on both sides of the ball did a great job. And, you know, I, I'd hate to not mention one of them, but you, you start with the edges and what both uh, Akeem Mezzo and Ruben Bain did. And, and hats off to C.J. Clark, man. C.J. Clark is now fully healthy and he's playing really well. Marley played well. Um, guys like, um, I mean, Ahmad Moten came back in the second half after Kiko. serving that, that suspension, did really well. The front seven, Kiko played a great game. I mean, Kiko was all over the field. So was Wesley. Jalen Alderman made some really important, you know, box tackles as well. And, and Popo got himself healthy enough to go back in there and play. Chase Smith continues to play well. So really proud of the front seven because they set the tone for the guys in the back end to be able to have success. Coach Mish Powell now. Pick mm -hmm. six, and he really turned the whole thing around. He should play the game. Yeah. And play the game, turn the momentum. Um, I mean, and watch him later. He almost gets another one, you know. So he, he is about as studious of a player as I've been around, and you should see him with a remote in his hand running a meeting. He sounds, talks, articulates everything, just like a, a very seasoned coach. So his experience and his leadership really paid off this game. Uh, ACC Defensive Player of the Week for Mish Pal. Uh, the, the physicality, that pr has to check a box for you, right? Because that was your vision coming here, that University of Miami was going to be a, a physical team, and here we are late in the season, and that part of your game is really showing up. It's getting better. It's certainly getting better and better. You know, at this time of the year, everything kicks in, right? What you've been doing since January, how you're eating, you know, getting to bed at the right time, being well prepared, taking care of your body. And then, of course, mentality, because no one feels good right now physically, right? Everybody's hurting. Everybody's banged up. It is very easy to complain and whine, and we just we won't allow that. We won't tolerate that from ourselves, from each other. And it's led by the players. They're the ones that are doing it. They're the ones that are pushing the tempo. Uh, and we had a really good result on Saturday. Coach, you want to go back to the running game, the combination of Fletcher Martinez. They were at 118 yards. And then you bring in, of course, <clears throat> Jordan comes in, and he has a phenomenal outing, you know, over – uh, 10 yards of carry and does a great job. What does that do to a defense to have to defend those different types of talents? Yeah, it's, it's, a, great, uh, it's a great combination and it's a great changeup. I think that sometimes it's undervalued. The body blows that a Damian Martinez and a Mark Fletcher put on a defense before uh, Jordan Lau got in there who just, he exploded. Mm -hmm. And it had been showing up in practice just like both Mark and Damian. Um, all those guys just do such a great job. And, and when Jordan got his opportunity this game, he certainly made the most of it. And, and again, shows what a, a great player he is and what uh, an impact he's going to have on this football team. I think the other thing that's interesting about your offense is there's so many weapons. And uh, for the last couple of weeks, nationally, uh, and deservedly so, X-Man's been the story with the records and all that. But then in the game on Saturday, here comes Arroyo, making some beautiful catches, maybe even running some of the routes that X would run, and Jacoby George with seven catches. The ball's been spread around really well, and, and credit to Coach Dawson and the rest of the offensive staff. I mean, they find ways to create opportunities for guys. And then Cam Ward just going through his progression, going through his reads. And if, if you run hard, you play hard, eventually the ball's going to find you, you know. So all those guys are getting an opportunity to play and touch the football. And they also all know that, all that is fine, but 20 years from now, no one's going to be talking about those, how many balls did you catch on this particular game or that game. They're going to be talking about whether you won or lost, you know? So all the focus, all the energy is on preparation so we could play our best game. And Mr. Ice himself, Borregalis, a bunch of extra points and well-needed field goals. He does it again. Yeah, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't flinch. No. He's so much fun to be around. I mean, I... Uh, I almost consider him an offensive lineman. You say know, he's a uh, he is. He yeah. is. It's great to be around him. He is. Uh, man, that guy is just in every facet of life and football. He is an accountable, dependable, responsible, real deal human being. You have to mention. Okay, Claiborne did get one on the touchdown, mm -hmm. but you got two, and Dylan Day got two. He got uh, down the ball at the one yard line. That was big, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you uh, made the decision to punt it at that point. Pin them back there. Dylan Day makes the play. And then the, uh, the uh, kickoff return, the fumble, he recovers the fumble. Yeah, well, both Dylans, both Dylan Joyce yeah. and Dylan Day, I mean, that's, that's executing that to a T. And that's what we do in practice all the time. So we have confidence 
that if we're in a, a fourth and maybe not a great, and something that we really feel that, okay, our chances are, are less of making it than it is pinning him down there, we feel very confident in being able to kind of just pitching wedge uh, that ball down there in a real tight, tight area and putting it down. Coach O.J. Federic, over 50 plays, and nobody said his name, which means he had a heck of a game. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just keeps getting better every week. He does. He does. He gets stronger. Um, the guy really takes care of his body. His approach to the game mentally is, is that of a professional, is that of a veteran. It shows. I think he's a great example for everybody, not only for young guys, but for older guys as well. I mean, he does everything, everything you're supposed to do as a successful, high-level college football player. Kind of putting a, a bow tie on Wake. Um, I think a lot of people look at Wake and they think of the old days, but they're not a they're not an easy team to play against. Uh, they do a good job of managing the game. They want to kind of force you to play their way, right? And uh, for a while there, the game they're trying to lull you to sleep, lull the crowd to sleep. But you you did not lose your patience. Your team did not lose the patience. You didn't lose patience. You played right along with the field position game, so forth and so on, until you swung it in your favor. Yeah, well, you know, and not only that, they're, they're a team that's they're scoring north of 25, yeah. 28 points a game. You know, so you have to be aware of that. And they're holding opponents, you know, to, uh, I believe, the mid-20s, low-20s as well. So, yeah, and every single game they've played, the minus one game outside of the conference, every single game they played was a fourth-quarter game. You know, one possession, maybe two possessions. So they've been there all the way through. And those teams are always the scariest ones. I mean, how many games have we watched, right, this, uh, this weekend, yeah. right? Different conferences, right, where all of a sudden this team that's supposed to, right, be at this particular level winning well, they're again upended by a team that maybe is fighting to get a winning record or whatnot. So you've got to be at your best every single week. Coach, talk about the importance of the entire season of your leadership council, but really when you're closing out the end of a season and the influence those young men have they're, on your whole team. They're the ones, they, they, they're the ones. They lead everything, they set the, the tone, the mentality, they drive practice. Uh, we lean on them hard. Mm -hmm. They allow us to push them hard. They have our full commitment, like in today's meeting, made it very clear, gonna have the scout teams coming after you as hard as they've ever come after you because that's what you deserve. That's my form, my greatest form of respect to you is to make sure we do everything possible to prepare you to have success. So those guys are, they're, they're incredible. You, I wouldn't trade those guys, couldn't ask for more from those guys, and, um, but we're gonna push them harder than they've ever been pushed. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Time now for our high performance moment presented by Kia. And what a moment this was. Perfect timing for Mish Pal on the Blitz, Don. It really was, Joe. And the thing about Mish is that he was eyeball to eyeball with the quarterback. He was watching where the ball was going to be thrown through the quarterback's eyes, makes a play on the football, accelerates into the end zone, and then does a little bit of a celebration. But a great call by defensive coordinator Lance Guidry, and, he, and a great return by Mish Powell. Takes it all the way to the house. ACC Defensive Player of the Week as well. Our high-performance moment presented by Kia. This Saturday, it is Miami and Syracuse at the Dome for the Hurricanes and Syracuse 24th meeting. Hurricanes lead the all-time series 16-7. Seven and three at Syracuse. Uh, this is why you came to Miami to put the Hurricanes in this kind of game. You played in one of these games up there in 92. I still remember that. Uh, Chris Gedney landed on the two-yard line. He sure did. Quarterback had a little problem on that last drive. He was kind of lost his lunch. But um, all these games are always great games to be in. And this one, this is a big one for you and for the University of Miami. Exactly what you wanted this program to be in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's uh, coming towards the end of November. And... Um, the most important of game of the year is right here, right in front of us. Uh, not only because it's the next game, but also it's a game that, you know, we have been setting our goals for and towards since the beginning against an excellent football team. Um, and so we have really worked hard at being a good team at home and being a good team on the road. We've worked every imaginable form of offense and defense, resistance, schematically uh, challenging situations that we may have. And, you know, it's a... Uh, this is just an unbelievable opportunity that has been earned by our players and the people of this program. So the only focus is on preparation and getting ready to play our best football. So we've been at it uh, since yesterday, since we've gotten back really on Saturday. 
and looking forward to another great day of practice tomorrow. Coach, how do you get the group ready, the team ready to go into a place like the Dome? I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's an unusual spot. It's different than if you played in Atlanta sure. or somewhere else. What do, you, what do you do for that? And back in the day, everybody used to go before the game. Right. Well, we uh, lucky for us, we have a great indoor, and you could really blast some ungodly loud noise in there mm-hmm. and, and prepare us for the environment that we expect to see. And, you know, schematically, um, we have really good scout team players, guys that take a lot of pride in it. And we also do service teams where, you know, the twos will be run by the offensive coach to give the defense a great look and then the vice versa to make sure we're getting quality, quality looks. So practice is very fast. The tempo of practice, the physicality of practice is real, even at this time of year, to try to make uh, and try to mimic the opponent um, as identically possible as we can. And it has, it has been really good for us. It's gotten our guys ready. And our guys really, like, they, they lean on that process. They feel comfortable at the end of every day knowing, okay, we feel really good about seeing these particular looks. Let's keep doing them, Coach, so that we can prepare for Saturday. I think it's fair to say, if you look at the numbers with, for Syracuse and the, the numbers the quarterback is putting up, this is a pass-first offense, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so he wants to put the ball in the air, and uh, he completes a lot of passes. He's a completion machine. You know, they, their passing numbers are, are certainly larger than their running numbers, but I wouldn't consider them a one-dimensional team by any stretch just because, number one, they have a really good offensive line. And secondly, their, their, their starting running back and their reserve running backs are all really good football players. And starting with, again, with their starter, um, explosive player, uh, jump cut, slice, make you miss, run you over, great speed. They get them the ball in space in so many different ways. Their screen game is off the chart. So uh, I wouldn't in any way, shape, or form consider them uh, one-dimensional because when people try to overload on the back end, they get gashed. They get gashed, and they do a great job calling the game. And Coach, they've been successful at home. I mean, they love playing in that dome, and they want to make it as difficult on Miami as possible there. Without a doubt. They're 5-1 and one at home, and really was had every opportunity to be 6-0 and oh at home. And it's, uh, it's not by accident. They put together a great roster, and they coach those guys well. It's a really good football team. Uh, McCord was at Ohio State. What, what jumps out to you about the way he operates their offense? Poise, accuracy, delivery, balls out quick. Um, if he has to buy some time, he has great pocket presence as well, escapability. If he has to take off with the ball, he does that as well. That's an underrated feature on, on him as well. People don't talk about that. He can flat out go. And you know what? When he was at Ohio State, had a great record over there, and now he's taken – all those abilities, and he's taking them to another level. I mean, I believe he's either one or two in the country in passing, um, and he's complemented by just a great supporting cast. Those guys work well together. The back shoulder throws, the contested balls, I mean, they're all over the film. I mean, when you watch them on film, you know, hey, man, buckle up, have a great week of practice, and make sure you're at your best on Saturday, and we're, we're excited for the opportunity. Because of McCord, very few people talk about Syracuse's defense, but they do a pretty good job, too. Their defensive front has got – some transfers from big-time places. Big physical guys. They yeah. mix it up really well also. They, they've used a couple different front structures mm-hmm. to uh, create pressure, to create negative plays. Um, I know that Diggs certainly, we've seen him for several years now, right, uh, in, in two different in uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> and he's always, always in the backfield creating all types of, of uh, just negative plays. He's complemented by some really big, powerful guys inside. And a couple linebackers, you know, that could flat out go. I know that, uh, you know, Marlo Wax has been there for a long, long time, and he's played really well for them. And then one of their converted safeties that's playing linebacker is just fast, big, physical, and long. Uh, their nickel has a ton of sack, just physical, explosive plays against the running backs. Um, they're, one of their corners, you know, number three, leads the conference that's right. in pass breakups. And they're number three, I believe, number two or three overall in pass defense in the conference. So, they play really good complimentary football. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on about them because we've obviously, you know, during the bye week, we were able to spend four days on, on Wake Forest and then a day and a half, two days on, uh, on Syracuse. So we're really familiar with what they've shown on tape so far. And on, all I could say are positive things about them. When Diggs graduates, I'm going because <laughs> I'm tired of seeing him three years in a row. Do they change their uh, defense according to the opponent? Are they one of those kind of teams that – uh, depending on who they play, that's how they're going to play defense? Sometimes, you know, and sometimes they just make adjustments on personnel, maybe being a little bit banged up at certain parts of the season. So you'll see different structures, right? You'll see a three down versus a four down look or whatnot, and some changes on the back end as who's playing what position. 
Uh, but all in all, they're, they know what they're, they're consistent in what they're doing, but you get a couple of different forms of a presentation of it. So, and they play fast, so they know their systems really well. For them to complete all those passes, they've got a pretty physical offensive line too. Big, big guys. They've got a lot of experience. No doubt. Big and physical. They get their hands on you. They move you. They run their feet through contact. Really impressed. Just really impressed with uh, the entire operation. Those big guys up front, they are large now. They are big, big human beings, and they do a good job getting people out the way. Well, they can play all those passes. They have wide receivers. <laughs> One of them's from down here. His dad played for the Dolphins. So we have to mention Rondé Gatson. I guess it's Rondé Gatson Jr. He was injured last year, but he's had three straight 100-yard games. Mm -hmm. And he uses every bit of the 6'5 that he is and then some. Um, tight end wide receiver does it all. He'll block you, and he'll also stretch the field in the passing game, the intermediate stuff, the quick stuff. Uh, he'll line up on the ball, hand down. He'll line up detached. He's he's all over the field, and what you see is tremendous body control uh, and making the contested catch, you know, high point the ball like a true pro. So, excellent football player. Coach, I want to go back to the defense for a moment. Ha them coming off such a great performance against Wake Forest, what does that do confidence-wise rolling into this week and uh, to, to the 1-0 point? We're going to go into one game this week, but you're coming off a pretty special day. It validates the things that they focus on, the things that they emphasize, all right? We emphasize, they emphasize, all of us emphasize, number one, communication, mm -hmm. and then alignment and assignment. When you do those things, we're naturally going to play hard. That's what we do. But when you're in the right spot, right, doing what you're supposed to do and, and having eye discipline and physical discipline, you're able to play fast and physical to your ability. So um, the buy-in on that and, and taking that part to another level we believe is going to keep making us better, and especially when you play great offenses like the one we played this weekend. I wanted to mention uh, Ruben Bain. He had a gigantic sack. Originally, I thought there were two or three people involved in it, but then you look at it a second time, that was just a, a lot of will and want to from Ruben Bain, knowing that Miami needed to make a big play at that time, and nothing was going to stop him from getting to the quarterback. Yeah, great get off, you know, great move around the edge, got some great power to him. Collapsed the pocket, got the quarterback down, big play in the game. One of the best games of the year for Maui Noah, 12 tackles, and he was everywhere. He was. He was. He, uh, again, communication. Yeah. Communication reigns supreme, right? When you're playing football, when you're running a business, whatever it is you want to do in life, communication is key, and certainly that took a, a massive upgrade on Saturday. And, and Mesidor, on the other side, uh, you've talked about how unselfish he is and has been all year. And uh, this week, or last week, he played outside, and he came up with some big plays as well. He is. That's uh, a little bit more of his natural home, but he's, um, he's a team player. He'll go anywhere. He'll play the nose. He'll play the three. And he's been very effective at both. And we felt for this particular game was best for him to be outside. And, and him um, and the rest of those guys out there, just they did a great job setting edges and creating pressure in the pocket. Coach, how do you handle the rotation on the defensive side during a football game? I know you have plans going into it, but once the bell rings, how do you handle it? Well, you know, we, we sit down as a staff and figure out what's, what's the rep count going to be, right? Mm -hmm. And also making sure in crunch time that your best players are in there. That's when the rep count, sometimes it just goes out the window, right? You got to it's, – it's not time to experiment, right, when, the, when things are on the line. So the guys that have earned – the right to play, the opportunity to play, will play. It's not based on how many years they've been here. It's not based on whether uh, a guy's unhappy and feels like he didn't. No, it's not. It's not, and it won't be. It's on guys that really bust their tails and that has shown they could help the team win, and guys that are maybe right there really, really close, and the development of that comes with playing will get that over the top. Those are the guys that, that see the field, you know, guys that can be trusted, all right? Trust is a really big and powerful word around here. Uh, this is Thanksgiving week, so uh, first, happy Thanksgiving. Like and um, the high schools, they're playing their playoffs, so it's a great time of the year. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and football goes together. And I think a lot of those guys in high school, they're looking over the University of Miami and seeing, hey, the Hurricanes are playing playoff football too because that's what you have coming up on Saturday. So it's a great time for this community uh, led by the University of Miami. It is, it's huge. I mean, it was great seeing all those people on Saturday. I mean, this community means the world to us now. I can't emphasize that enough, and maybe we should talk about it more, but you see our guys out there in community service opportunities all the time, working with the local kids, the parks, little league teams, schools, elementary schools, high schools. I mean, you name it, we do it. You know, we do it because we love 
our people. We love our community. So we, uh, we're, there's a lot of pride in putting on that you, slapping on the side of your helmet and going out there and representing the people of South Florida. You love recruiting also, and that's coming to the first phase of it is uh, coming up very soon. Where are we at in the push to get everybody signed? Put on does the it gas. stop? No, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. We'll never stop. And even when the first signing day comes and goes, it still doesn't stop. It'll just, it just goes. It's, uh, it's an endless cycle. You never want to skip a cycle. You never want to miss on a cycle. You know, you, you might have some classes that might be a little bit more productive than others, but you'd like for it, that, that line to have very little curves in it. You like to always be steady and productive. Uh, you can't have holes in classes. If you have holes in classes, you're going to have holes in seasons. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's a, that's a 24 seven nonstop. It's, it's gotta be part of your, of your DNA. It's, it's really a big part of your life. Well, what could be better than getting to the last regular season game of the year and playing the most meaningful game of the year last, right? So here we are, and uh, the very best of luck on Saturday against Syracuse. Awesome. Thank you. Go Canes. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal, and we will continue on the show right after this. When you give it your all to be in peak condition, sometimes you get hurt. From meniscus or rotator cuff tears to muscle strains and other common sports injuries, the experts at the University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute, part of U Health University of Miami Health System, are committed to getting you back to your best safely, effectively, and as quickly as possible. Recover your game with the same team that cares for your Miami Hurricanes. Schedule an appointment today at ulsports.com. Welcome back to the Mario Cristobal Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr. And this Saturday, we'll be in Syracuse as the Canes take on the Orange. And what a game this could be. Last week, Wake Forest tried to lull you to sleep. This week, Syracuse wants to track me. That they do, Joe. They throw the football about 70% of the time, have three outstanding receivers. Last week alone, everybody was over 100 yards. They had one guy over 170. They have a good enough running game to keep you honest, but I think really what nobody's talking about is the quality of defense. They have some very good players on that side of the ball as well. They do have good players on defense, but Miami has a very good run game. And Syracuse has struggled stopping the run. Well, living proof is UConn was over 100 yards rushing against them just a week ago. So Miami will put the three-headed monster, maybe four-headed monster, on the field against Syracuse and try and run the football. The Cuse is 15th in the league against the run. Okay, this is for uh, a chance to go to the ACC championship game. So very significant for this program. Well, as we just mentioned, it is playoff, and that would only be the second time that has happened in the history of this program as we've been involved in the ACC. So win this one, and you are in. Hurricanes look for an 11-win season also for the first time since 2003. For Don Bailey Jr. and head coach Mario Cristobal, I'm Joe Zagacki. Thank you for joining us.